Skateboarding, eh? Yeah, longboarding, really. I rode skateboards once. Once? Yep. How'd it go down? I was badass skateboarder, dude. Probably wouldn't believe me now, but it's true. <laughs> I was badass. I used to ride Powell Peralta. Hell yeah. You remember them? <laughs> no. No, you weren't even born. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube, and I'm here today with Sam. Hi. Samantha, Sammy, which do you prefer? Sammy. Um, and I'm going to do a hair today. So Sammy sent me some references during the week, and um, we're going to do this whole, um, classic 70s Farrah Fawcett, reworked, reinvented, and give it a sort of modern uh, twist, because she's telling me she wants to recreate a skateboard scene. It's an iconic photo with, is it Farrah Fawcett? Yeah. Uh, riding a skateboard so um, what that involves is obviously a lot of movement and shaping around the face um, those classic 70s long hair looks generally had shorter lays in the interior keeping as much length as we can we don't want to go towards that whole mullet space this still needs to be very beautiful and very wearable but um, yeah I think it's a really good look I've, I've, I've actually seen um, especially on social media this is starting to trend a lot yeah. um, people are starting to do it so um, it, I'm fortunate that Sam Sammy wants to do it and um, we're going to create it today um, what we're also going to do is, you can see these products are sitting here to the left from, from Matrix. This is a Dark Envy um, shampoo, conditioner, and mask. So what Dark Envy does is allows us to refresh uh, Sam's colour at the basin um, without having to do traditional colour. So um, I'll have a chat to you a bit later on about how that works. Um, but basically it comes in three parts, shampoo, conditioner, mask. And what it does, it just brightens up and, uh, well, it doesn't really brighten up. It just it creates vibrancy and warmth in brunette. So a lot of the products that we have, uh, access to in terms of shampoo and conditioner to address color generally uh, sort of uh, targeted at blondes so we have like violet shampoo silver shampoos you can put like you know pink tones or violet tones and um, red tones and copper tones in pre-lightened hair but um, this is a really good one because actually uh, doesn't forget about the brunettes of the world um, so we're going to see before and after so if you could take your hair out Sam that'd be great and then we just want to have a little quick before and after so we can see I guess um, we want to sort of see uh, where the shape is going to be put in and um, the effects of this Dark Envy shampoo and conditioner. So I'm really excited to do this haircut actually. Because um, there was a little, little revival of that when I started hairdressing probably early 2000s. Um, when started becoming Yeah, it started becoming a thing. I think that whole Friends Jennifer Aniston thing yeah. it was like this. But I prefer the sort of outward movement, so I'm really excited to do this. I haven't done one for a while. All right, we're going to um, get Sam over to the basin. We're going to uh, use these products at the basin, and then we'll come back. We're going to start a hair, and then when we dry it off, hopefully you guys can see a difference in the colour. Okay, back from the basin. Let's pull this hair out and have a look. So we do have some already shortness, but this is gonna actually come up a little bit onto the cheeks because we wanna turn that out on both sides. So because this is where the hair is gonna be the shortest, this is where I'm gonna start the haircut. Um, and I'm doing it wet. And I'm doing it wet because we're actually going to change the length considerably. So let's get started on the front. Vertical section down the side. And we just want to make sure that we've got enough in here to be able to cut us a strong guideline. And then, as always, we're going to start in rectangles. Try and get your hair straight, babe. And it's so important that we over direct them. I just want to check that camera and make sure that you'll be able to see when I project this up. So let me lift it up a little bit. So you to put your chin down for me. So this also helps with the projection. So what we want to be able to do is retain as much length as we can. So if I was doing traditional face framing, I'd probably do it around 90 degrees, which is about, well, if Sammy puts her head back in the natural position, it's there, right angle. Graduation is obviously below that. We want to keep the hair quite long. So I'm actually going to project the hair up. So to help that, if Sammy just dips her chin down, already we're below 
uh, zero. So we don't have to project it so high to be able to hit the angle that we want. Have to make sure that we really over direct this front. I want to retain all this length. Head up a little bit, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Yep, thanks. Head was a bit too far down. So this is all about layering it as much as we can in the front, but I want to leave this. We don't want to touch that, yeah? That's got to stay. So it's this hair here. So the reason why we over direct it is because when you come this way, you're actually cutting over your shoulder. Whereas if we hold the hair that way and we cut down almost like diagonal back, you end up cutting all this length off. So by directing it above 90 degrees and turning our body away, it allows us to be able to over exaggerate the hair. And then what I do, over direct the hair. And then what I do is you can see I'm actually cutting straight almost like a V, which is like this. So it's very, let me grab another comb so I can show you. It's a very, very tight angled V shape like this. So if you can imagine all the hair is being lift to here and then over directed. So I'm cutting actually down this way, not down that way because otherwise you end up with no, no hair left. So it's really important that you, you're over, over directing this and getting um, that really pronounced angle so that we don't end up with a situation where she's got no hair left on her body because that's not how Farrah wore it. We've got to get our inner Farrah going on. Head up again, thank you. So once you've got a guideline, it makes it really easy. I'm actually gonna swap my shear out. I've actually been getting a lot of um, questions about the scissors that I use. Um, so I'm gonna show you the ones that I would use for long hair and the reasons why. So these are both um, Australian, Exxon Edges Premium, um, which is their top of the line. However, you can see the difference in the length. So one's six and a half and one's seven. So the reason why I like using a longer blade is because you can obviously you know, get, get to the hair easier and closer and you can cut in a larger um, space than rather going like cut that much, then move again, cut that much, and then move again, cut that much. You know what I mean? You can actually cut more of uh, the hair all at once, so on the one plane. So longer scissors are not only for barbering, they're also good for cutting long hair. Just, I know you want to see yourself, but every time you turn your chin, I can't see the angle properly. So, project the hair, turn the body. I can see my guideline there. I'll bring you guys in on another angle in a sec. And then this hair is the one we don't want to cut. And then when we do this, still, the hair is not one millimetre shorter. Look, here's the other side. We haven't touched it. Same length on both sides. This is all about connecting the hair from the cheekbone to the chest. And I know that they, um, they did Farrah's hair this way because um, this is actually, uh, I actually think, and look, if someone out there who actually can fact check this for me, but I'm pretty sure that Vidal Sassoon cut Farrah Fawcett's hair in the 70s when he was in, in LA. Um, and um, this is the technique, the mathematical technique that we learn at Sassoon when we want to shape hair around the face, starting with a very short point and not um, cutting it shorter on the ends. We want to retain the length. But if someone wants to fact check that, I'm sure you could find it on Google. Did Vidal Sassoon cut Farrah Fawcett's hair? And if it's no, I'm sure I'm going to be told about it pretty quick. <laughs> oh, Twitter will be fact-checking my tweets. You can see we're starting to run out of hair here. Over-direct it. That's it. I'll do the other side. So I'm just going to move this around so you guys can see. And you can see on the inside of the shape how I did it. Chin up again for me. So when I'm over directing it, although I'm standing in my way, I'd come actually behind the camera. You can see here. Then you let it go. Pick all the hair up at once 
And this is also why long combs are good when you're cutting these type of shapes in long hair, because you can actually use your comb almost like a protractor. See that? You see the angle? So what you actually have to do is you're cutting almost straight towards Sam's face. You're not cutting across this way. You're not cutting like back that way. It's really important that you, you understand you're cutting almost like two, almost straight lines back towards the head and that's how I retain length. So now I'm gonna do that on the other side. So I'm gonna take a little section from here just as a guideline for my length. And what I generally do is just snip literally like a tiny little piece on that side. Yeah, and then that can go away. Now I've got my guide. So again, we need to over direct. I'm not sure if you can, my elbows there, if you can see. I'm trying to put the camera so you can actually see like you're here next to me. So you can see I'm really swinging that around and I'm cutting that straight up. Not enough hair underneath there, get a bit more. Really, really over direct the hair. Swing your body around a lot, over direct it. There it is there. Don't drop it, pick the hair up underneath. Make sure you project it back to the same angle. So you don't want to get caught doing it down here like this. You need to even lift the hair from down here back up to the top and cut it on the same plane. You can see here, that's the baseline here. That's the baseline, never got touched. Let's have a look. Baseline didn't get touched. Now what I'm gonna try and do guys, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm thinking on the next video, and I would like to hear your comments on this, I'm actually gonna try and wear a GoPro. And so what I'll do is I'll put the GoPro on my chest. So it'd actually be like, you'll actually have a, you know, a really good angle to be able to see um, exactly the angles that I'm hitting with a perfect vantage. But what I'm gonna do now is try and actually stand on top of the camera. So I'll slide that right under the chair onto your legs. And let's see if this works. I think it will. If I don't kick it over first. And then you'll see the angle that I, I get. So you can see it there. And then I'm actually cutting straight up, see? Sorry for the shaking camera, I keep kicking it, it's because I'm standing on top of it. There's nothing to cut, don't go looking for it. Look, it's tiny, tiny little bit left. And this is a mistake that happens a lot of the time is we go hunting for hair to cut off. If it's not there, it's not there. Just this little part here, look. Amazing. We'll cross check. Should have a nice V in the front. I think um, they call them a, I think they call them a chest plate, Sammy. And I can put my GoPro on there. That'd be pretty cool. Do you ride? Do you wear a GoPro when you ride your skateboard? No, I don't. Oh I do fuck, have a GoPro. man, you got you got to put it on. I you know what you do? You mount up. No, yeah, you stick it onto your yeah, your deck. Board, yeah. Or you um put it on the, you can put it on your like a hat. Yeah, a lot of people wear um mouth guards and just hold it in their mouth. Oh really? Yeah. Let me make sure I get this on the right angle. You can see that little bit of hair there. So this is the baseline, we don't want to touch that. And now we've done that, we should have a nice V shape there. 
No, still missed a little bit of hair. Let's see which side that's coming from the middle. So I'm going to cross check both sides. I've seen a lot of hairdressers do this in many, many different ways. You know, I've always said there's no right or wrong unless the client doesn't like it, then it doesn't matter how good you think you are, it's not right. So however you want to get there, it's fine. But one of the things I do say, guys, is rather than me slicing the hair like this, closer to zero degrees, which would effectively make the hair more solid, and then texturizing it, I use projection to determine how I want the hair to fall and how soft I want it to fall, whether it's soft or, or hard. So the closer we cut the hair to zero degrees, the more solid it becomes. When we project it further away from zero degrees, so into the graduation space, it'll fall softer again. Then into the layering space, it falls even softer. So I'm using that projection and then cutting a blunt line here, projected at the angle I want. So when it falls, you already have that softness and you'll see there'll be minimal amount of uh, texture needed to be able to ensure that this sits right. Last check. This is uh, easier for those of us with uh, big hands and you'll see why having a long comb like see why having a long comb helps because you can actually just sit the hair in the comb like that horizontal comb project just a tiny little bit there and then obviously we will we will cross check this when it's dry so um, try and get the try and get the uh, shape to around about 90% accuracy while it's wet and then we'll make those fine little adjustments when it's dry. Check the other side again just to make sure. I can see there's a long bit hanging out there. There it is there and we're oh, done. Let's have a look. So I'm going to pull this back. We should now start to see this shape all starting to come through here where we can start to now flick it. You got a bit of curling here, Sammy. Yeah. Mate, you're going to be like just a little bit of a moisturizer. You're going to let this dry natural. Front's done. We'll trim the ends in a minute. I'm not worried about the ends at the moment. We'll do that last because we want to keep as much length as we can. I'm going to section out the front. What we're going to create in terms of a shape here, in technical terms, is we're going to create concave. So concave shape, you've probably seen in the back, like an A-line, you've seen it in the front when we um, create that shape, but now we're actually gonna create it here. So we wanna go short to long here, and then short to long there. Um, this is how you create that shape. For me, this is the best way to do it. The reason why I go short to long and not horizontal, or not, yeah, not horizontal, no, not vertical, or not uniform, is because I don't wanna take any more weight around the face. We wanna keep that, um, quite plump and voluptuous in there because if you look at the reference photos of Farrah Fawcett, it's always very plump. So if we were to go and do that uniform, we invertedly are going to take weight out of here and it's going to make this hair here even lighter. We don't want to do that. So by over directing it and creating concave shape, so short to long, as I said, from the crown, short to long, short to long, we can over direct um, the hair away from the exterior and that way we don't take weight out of here and we don't take weight out of here. I start by taking about a centimetre. Actually, I'm going to spin Sam the other way because I'm right-handed. It's another good thing to explain because if you're... Let me put it back this way first. Like, sorry, I'm making you dizzy. Not on purpose. So you can imagine it would be very difficult for me to control that and then cut back into my hand or back into my body, back into my arm. So the best way to control this, if you're right-handed, for left-handed people, it would be the opposite is actually like to cut away from my hand or away from the head or away from the face. But we're, we're cutting it away. We're not cutting back into ourselves. So I take about a half inch uh, section from the crown all the way through. And I don't want to make it overly short, but uh, what I do want to see is the front hair, when I project it, see it's starting to fall out. It must fall out. It has to fall out because otherwise we're not leaving that behind. That's good. I'm going to take that off there. Split that in half. So now we've got a guideline for both sides. I'm going to pick all this hair up at once. And because we've laid it, there might not be a lot to cut off. 
because sorry, because we've already shaped and framed the front. I think I missed my guideline, maybe a little bit. There it is there. So there is a little bit, not too much. Leave that there. Now we bring this side in. And I'm going to pick the other side up as well. So effectively now we're going to cut this whole section at once. But all we did was we made our job a little bit easier by cutting one side first. But this is like cutting the other side and cross-checking at the same time. And I'm cutting it right in the middle of uh, Sammy's face. We'll leave that there. We're going to do the same thing again, but we're going to create our half inch section or a half inch guideline, set guide section into the back. Push these over the shoulders so we don't get lost. We're going to pull this hair out at 90 degrees first to make sure we've combed it all the way from the scalp because we don't want to drag it. We want to comb out first, up. We'll hold that. We're going to literally take the hair that we just cut as our guideline. And now we need to turn Sam the other way because again, we want to cut away from the head. Can we over direct that? That's our guideline. Let me just adjust that camera because you guys can't see. Just chin forward, just a little bit perfect. So we're gonna project it out. And if the hair falls out underneath, that's fine because we really don't want to, uh, as I said, remove any weight out of the end. So we'll see that drop in a second. There the back goes. There's our guideline here. Easy enough. And you see that shape there in the back. And uh, it's probably worth mentioning that this can be done shorter if you like. Um, you just have to make sure that you over the, you, you're able to execute the geometry. And when I, when I say that, what I mean is you want to make sure that it's possible to be able to over direct the hair out of the way. So you could really like go quite acute like that and over direct it. You just want to make sure that you don't um, go and cut it out here because if you did that, you cut all the length off, you'd end up with big weight lines. So just like we did with the front, section this comes back to the middle of the head you can see my guidelines there we don't comb that one out pick the other side up and again we do it all at once then we're going to dry the hair off we'll trim the ends and we'll be done That um, Dark Envy shampoo is definitely um, giving it a little bit of um, a boost. You can see the, uh, the tones. There it is there. Done. Time to style and dry and style. So we're going to use a little bit of the Mega Sleek. This is just to settle down a little bit of this fluffiness. Not too much. You don't want to weigh it down and make it heavy. Then we're going to use the High Amplify Volume um, Foam. So what I actually do, I don't know if you guys do this, I actually mix them together. So I find that works really well. I haven't had any dramas with um, combining Matrix uh, products together and almost making your own. Um, it seems to work really good. Majority of this we're gonna put in the top, just in the hairline here where I said is a little bit fluffy. I'll put too much in there. So if you use too much, grab a towel, take it off. I'm not a huge fan of loading, um, loading product up into the hair. Um, I like to brush moose through, something I've always done, unless I am doing curls. Obviously, if I'm gonna dry um, someone's hair curly or let it dry naturally, um, I wouldn't do this, but this just ensures that you get the product evenly through the hair. Let's comb it back now into our party. And we should be able to see this shape starting to form. I'm gonna spin Sam around. So Sammy, I keep calling you Sam. Sammy, Sam. Is it Samantha? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna spin Sammy around just so you can see the shape in the back, because as I already said to her, I actually think that she could absolutely get away with drying this naturally. And you can see this starting to form. And if we just quickly just 
take this off it temporarily for two seconds because dark hair on dark cape. That way we'll be able to see that this is actually starting to dry so perfectly. And you can see why she could wear that curly. That's gonna sit out. That'll sit out there. This will dry up a little bit higher. That's really good. Um, let's spin you around the back, we'll see. And again, you can see we've just got that enough shape in there to give us height and it'll move, you'll have that. Hello, Dippy girl. Dippy. Hello, good girl. Where's, where's Papa? Where's Papa? Thank you. Eyes closed. Should I do it this way? Yeah, this is where we adjust the shape in the front. Just gonna Cut away some of those finer pieces in there that can sometimes be a bit problematic. You see those little, and that's a result of us projecting it high because we wanted to leave the softness there. And now I've decided that it was a bit too soft, so we just take it, take it off. But if you've, and as, as I said, if you go and just cut it solid and then you texturize the hair, it's, I don't know, for me, there's, there's better ways of doing things. I, I wouldn't do it that way. So you can always remove the softness if you don't need it, but when it's already gone, you have to resort to texturizing the hair to put it back, which for me in, in long hair, just it doesn't grow out very well. So um, when, when you put lots of texture, for me, I've, I've found over the years, it doesn't um, tend to grow out really well. So I try and avoid using texturizing scissors in long hair wherever I can. Now I'm projecting the hair back to the original section and I'm putting it through my fingers Again, just adjusting that, that weight. And now we're gonna just do a little bit of point cutting in the, in the denser areas. So the denser area is um, towards the top here. Just so that we get that little bit of flow. But it's, in Sam's hair, it's so minimal that you could probably barely notice it if you're looking at it, but it does make a difference because where you put short hair, it, it will direct the long hair. So if you put short hair in between long hair, especially from the top down, it's actually will make it flick out. Chin up a little bit more. Thanks, babe. I'll just do the other side. Good. Just don't cross your legs when we're done. I've got to do this sitting down and it could crack me. see it's already starting to flick out a bit better there was just not and like when it comes to leaving or removing weight in the hair we have to understand that sometimes if it's too light 
we can actually make it a little bit hard to achieve the shapes we want. So you do need to have um, structure. You can't always have everything textured and, and um, soft because otherwise, as I just found then, the reason why I had to go back and cut out all that softness that I left is because it wasn't flicking out enough. Don't move. Now you watch what happens. Look how that's just flicking out by itself now, see? So that's why, you know, you have to make adjustments. So, I mean, I've just learned on the fly. So this is how hey, you know it's real because I thought that it was going to still have enough weight in it to be able to flick it, and it doesn't. So I just took all the, the softness that I left by pr projecting and over-directing it away, and you can see it all flicks up now. So, I mean, that looks amazing. So now all we need to do, chin down again, babe, is bring everything from the back like we did originally to the front and make sure that it doesn't pass our baseline there because if it does, um, you're gonna have a situation where it may look like you've, you've missed them here and that can be a bit embarrassing. So you need to make sure you bring it all to the front and none of it hits your baseline and I can see that it does. So that's why we bring it all here. I'm sitting down because I actually need to do this below 90 degrees and I've got to flick it. So. Mate, that uh, shampoo is just really, like, just bright. And, I don't know if bright's the right. It's, I don't know, it's, it's not bright. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's actually, it's like a polish almost. Like, it's polished it up. It looks good. It looks real good. The dark envy. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky, you've got to be patient guys because you have to actually grab this all at once because if you don't, that's it, got ya. See, it's only just a little bit but it matters. Yep, flicks out all the way to the ends now. I'll grab this other side. You're rocking, babe. Now it's starting to flick. So we'll dry this so it all flicks out. Shape's good. Length is better. Just check one more time. And then we'll make sure those flicks don't fall out. We'll set them in. Good. Head this way for me. No, no, this way. Yep, thanks. Don't move. Yep. Make a move. Yep. because of the camera in the way. Oh, look at the sun coming down on that here. Yeah, look at that. Do you guys see that? 
I don't know if you can, I'm going to spin you back around so they can see your colour. Can you see this? Look at that beautiful gloss and glow in the sunlight. The sun shining down in you, Sammy. Must be the new haircut. I'm just going to whip this off because I can't find my white cape, so I'm not sure where they are. All right, so let's see how we did. Let's see if we got a little bit of fur in your life. So remember what I said at the beginning of this video, guys. This is a modern version of this. Now, I didn't want to do it super all flicked out that real short almost mullet all the way back i want it to be more modern so i'm just gonna really work on making the big it's all about outward movement rather than the hair turning in it's about having it flicking out and i just want to use our hands i want this to scrunch back because this is again it's all about modern we don't want that sort of perfectly round brushed back off the face look. We do want it to flick back, but you can see I'm twisting it back with my hands. And we spoke in this beginning of this video about maybe making um, a video or maybe Sammy can send me a picture of when she dries it curly because I'm really excited about how it actually is gonna look when it's curly. So you can see I'm actually like, I actually twist the hair back in and I'm scrunching it back in because I want it to be a little bit more modern and, and undone, like worn in. Let's have a look at the back. So you can see here it's starting to curl back and then here again we want it to be versatile. Let me grab the Amplify Volume Moose, this one here. Again, this is, moose is great for afterwards just to, you know, we're going riding a skateboard, man. Yeah, this is not going to be, when I go into a ball or I want this to be quite airy and believable and people just think, fuck, man, that chick's got cool hair, not, oh, she's been to the hairdresser. You can tell. We don't want that just been to the hairdresser thing going on. And moose is is really good, it's like hair glue. So all those little hairs that fly away everywhere that are gonna annoy you under here, we just place that underneath. If you want it to be barreled, like I said, we can just scrunch it back in. So I got hair on your face, I'll get off in a sec. Last but not least, Close your eyes, babe. So, haircut for this definitely has to have the ability, just um, lean your hand towards the, head towards the window for me. We need to create the shape, but we also, um, and this is not a shameless plug for Matrix, although you guys all know how great they are to me. They, without Matrix, we wouldn't be able to do these videos. 
but we do need good styling product to be able to get this to do what we want it to do. And we're done. I love hairdressing, I'll tell you why, because today I have been, Sam, Sammy just asked me, Adam, how long have you been hairdressing? I was like, uh, 20 years, and I'm like, I'm getting old. Um, but I learned something today. Because um, when we first did this shape in the front, um, I left, uh, I over-directed the hair too much, I projected it too high, I left too much length and made it too soft. But the good thing is that if you do that, you can always cut it shorter and you can always take more, um, more of the softness away by cutting it stronger like a small solid line. However, if you did it the other way first, um, you would probably be having an uncomfortable conversation with your client about why it looks better really short or you would have to go back and use texturizing shears or texturizing scissors and thin it out, which is not, not something we really want to do. So, um, Yeah, so um, the shape's there, but as I mentioned, it's really important to make sure that um, we've got the styling products that we need to be able to create this shape because um, yes, the haircut is good. Yes, you do need to have the right shaping to be able to style it this way, but it's not going to do it by itself. So um, the good thing about this um, haircut, so we had a Farrah Fawcett reference, the skateboard in California down Venice Beach, um, but I gave it a modern twist. Um, and the reason why I gave it a modern twist is it needs to be wearable and relevant for today. Sammy's not going to get up every morning and use a round brush and flick her hair out perfectly like Farrah did when she was having those photos done because we all know there was hair just there doing that for us. So what we did is we styled the hair using an iron, then I brushed it out to soften it. And I've used actually the Amplify Mousse and I've used my fingers and just scrunched the hair back in to almost give it that barreled look. Um, when Sammy wants to wear it uh, not so styled, she can wash and wear it, it'll be curly because we know her hair's curly, or she can blow dry it and still turn it under or still have that nice sort of just curtain bang flicking out and the rest just sort of soft movement or she can actually curl it. So versatility is really important and the way that we made this modern is we've given it a, vers a versatile um, styling and uh, a little modern twist. Thanks for coming in today, you look hot. Um, please make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already or this is your first video Make sure you hit that subscribe button because otherwise when I'm uploading stuff you'll miss out and that's sad And uh, also if you know someone who may benefit from this video uh, Make sure you share it with them um, without sharing we can't grow and um, It's uh, our uh, duty to make sure that we can share all our knowledge with everyone and not keep it for ourselves So um, thanks for coming in Sammy thanks for having me. Um, Until next time guys, it's take care. Bye